Are you an investor that is having a hard time earning serious money on the stock market? Are you stuck, overwhelmed by the never-ending waterfall of financial news and get-rich-quick schemes? Not sure what works and what doesn't? Well, fear not. You're in the right place. Because this is the official Value Investing Boot Camp Podcast. And now, to help you skyrocket your returns, here is your host, value investing expert, Nick Krockman. Hello, and thanks again for tuning in to the Value Investing Bootcamp podcast. I'm your host, Nick Krakman, and I'm really amazed at the amount of questions uh, I have received from you guys since the, since the last episode in which we discussed how to value a uh, company, how to calculate the intrinsic value of a company. I received many questions, uh, and I an answered all of them, so I hope... Uh, you are uh, content with the answers I've been giving you. Otherwise, just shoot me another email. And um, if you haven't sent me an email yet or a tweet, you can also send me a tweet uh, at value sheet or an email to nick at value spreadsheet uh, So thanks again for all the support and all the, yeah, the positive comments that I've received from you guys. I really, really appreciate it. You're all awesome. It really motivates me to, uh, yeah, continue this and to, uh, give it my best so what we're going to do today is talk about three different rates which are all important to investors uh, we're talking about interest rates growth rates and discount rates so what is the difference well an interest rate is the amount of uh, money you have to pay the percentage you have to pay when you uh, take on a loan so that is called the interest rate the growth rate uh, is for example the growth rate of uh, what we are talking about is the earnings growth rate so what percentage uh, the earnings grow of a company uh, on an annual basis or quarterly basis and then the discount rate which is a um, fictitious rate which we use to calculate the value of a dollar in the future in today's money. So we talked about in this in the previous episode. It's called the net present value, and it's used to, um, yeah, it's used in a lot of uh, valuation models. So that's the discount rate. Let's start with the interest rate. At this moment, interest rates are at a historically low point. They're almost well, they're they're, they're below one percent, and uh, this means that. Companies can loan money at very cheap rates, which means uh, if it's easy to to get money, if it's cheap to get more money uh, using a loan, this uh, creates more money. This makes more money available also to invest in stocks. So what you often see is when interest rates are low, stock prices generally go up. So while stock prices are uh, have been going up for the past couple of months, this low interest rate has been partially causing that. So it's sort of an artificial uh, yeah, boom, or uh, which we have seen in the, in the last couple of months or even years that this interest rate has been so low. Uh, expect that uh, once they start uh, increasing the interest rate again, uh, you will, uh, we will get a downward pressure on, uh, on stock prices. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, then another rate that is important to investors is the earnings growth rate. So there, there is uh, the historical growth rate, of course. So you can just see, okay, in, in one year a company made a hundred million dollar profit, and the next year it made a hundred and ten million dollar profit. So the earnings growth rate is ten percent. So that's that's all good. Uh, however, investors are mostly interested in future growth rates. And the problem with the future is that it's hard to predict, or even sometimes impossible to predict. However, we can make an educated guess. Uh, we can base our um, future, uh, our expected growth rate on the historical growth rate. So, as I just said, you can look at how uh, fast the company's earnings has, have been growing in the past, and then base your growth rate on that or you can look at what analysts are predicting you can go to uh, finance.yahoo.com and see what analysts are predicting for uh, the coming five years uh, however this is not to say that this uh, i mean these guys these analysts they're often spending a lot of time researching stocks so they're 
estimates are uh, based on a lot of research, but this does not mean that they can predict the future better than someone else can. I mean, it's still a, a matter of um, predicting and uh, ba on a sum based on assumptions, um, and it, it, it's not always easy to do this. So just take them with a grain of salt and always try to be a bit conservative with your growth rates because a growth rate uh, can have a major impact on the valuation that you the, the intrinsic value that you calculate of a company so if you base your decisions on that uh, be sure to uh, yeah make these um make a conservative estimate and the uh, one way i do this personally is by taking this analyst estimate and then multiplying it by 0 0.75. Uh, what this does is it just takes a 25% safety margin. Uh, it lowers the predicted um, growth rate by 25%, which means you end up with a more conservative estimate. And uh, this is easier for a company to meet and to exceed. So if you base your, uh, this, if, if you use this conservative growth rate and you still find that a company is attractive uh, to buy, even if it would grow at that conservative rate, then uh, yeah, you, you, you just uh, put yourself, you set yourself up for success because you minimize the downside risk while maximizing the upside, uh, potential the the upside surprise you know it, it because if it does perform as well as analysts expect then yeah you you uh, were using your conservative rate so you probably bought it at a such a low price that you will make a lot of money when the company does perform as well as the analyst expected so then the final rate is uh the discount rate so as i said uh, this is the fictitious imaginary rate that you use to calculate the net present value of a future dollar. So we explained that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. This is what we talked about in the previous episode. Uh, because this dollar, if you have it today, you can invest it and you can earn a return on it. So it, it will grow over time. So it will be worth more than one dollar in the future. Uh, but the discount rate that you use is then therefore related to uh, how much money you uh, can reasonably earn with this dollar today so if you calculate want to calculate the net present value of a stock uh, which is often used in in stock valuation models um, the discount rate that i prefer to use is the uh, average return of the stock market uh, the histor average historical return of the stock market which has been between eight and ten percent so using any of these, uh, for example, if you use 10%, you will get a more conservative estimate. If you use 8%, you get a slightly less conservative estimate. So I, I usually aim for 9 or 10% as a discount rate. And this will give you a um, sort of a conservative uh, estimate of the intrinsic value. If you also use a conservative growth rate, then you can be sure that... Um, your estimate is, is also conservative and if you then buy way below the value that you calculate uh, you, you build in a big margin of safety uh, and room for error because you are in, uh, of course uh, acting on imperfect information and this will allow you to uh, minimize risk while maximizing the uh, upside potential. So don't really rely on what estimates the analysts make. Just take them with a grain of salt, especially when these estimates are extremely high. You should never rely on high expected growth because this is just very hard to meet. For example, if you look at the Tesla Motors at this moment, the the stock price is so high uh, and it, it, it would require such high growth rates to justify this stock price it's just unreasonable and also keep in mind that the current stock prices have risen significantly because they experienced uh, an upward pressure because of the low interest rates but this is an artificial pressure and once these interest rates are uh, inevitably uh, if they are they, they will be increased in the near future and this will create a significant downward pressure on stock prices so 
keep that in mind and I'll see you in the next episode where we will talk about when to buy and when to sell. Thank you very much and have a great day. If you enjoyed today's show, head over to valueinvestingbootcamp.com to find out more on how you can invest like the pros, manage your own portfolio with confidence, and consistently earn mind-boggling returns on the stock market. 